Hello and welcome back to Monetize History. I'm Daniel and today we're going to be talking about Puebla, Ignacio Zaragoza, and Cinco de Mayo. The 500 peso bill has a number of security features. There's a watermark of Zaragoza to the left of his portrait, two security strips, one with the notes denomination, microprinting, a perfect registration mark that reveals the number 500 when held to the light, color changing ink, and iridescent ink. Although this note is legal tender in Mexico, it is in the process of being retired and rarely shows up in circulation. The Bank of Mexico began printing it in 1994 and replaced it in 2010. Its face value is a bit over $20, but they sell for between $40 and $90 on eBay. The portrait on the obverse of the note is Ignacio Zaragoza. He was born in what would become Goliad, Texas, and as a young man fought against Antonio de Santa Ana in the Reform Wars. When the French forces of Napoleon III invaded Mexico in 1861, he resigned his position as Secretary of War in order to lead the Mexican Army of the East opposing the French. He would write his name in the history books outside the city of Puebla on May 5, 1862. The numerically superior French forces were decisively defeated by the stout defense led by Zaragoza. Although the victory at Puebla was not strategically valuable, it boosted the morale of the Mexican army and surprised the world, which expected a quick Mexican defeat. In writing to President Benito Juarez of the victory, he wrote one line, The national arms have been covered with glory, which is written to the right of his portrait. Unfortunately, Zaragoza would die later that year from typhoid fever. The picture to the left of Zaragoza is a painting by Spanish painter Joseph Cusacks, depicting the battle. It is on display in the National History Museum in Mexico City. Today, the battle is commemorated every year on the 5th of May, or Cinco de Mayo. The reverse of the note features the rear exterior of the Puebla Cathedral, the second largest in the country. The construction of the cathedral began in 1575, but wasn't entirely completed until 1690. The structure dominates the main square of Puebla, and is one of the primary landmarks in the city. The background of the note highlights the architecture of the cathedral's arches, domes, and windows, as well as design elements common to the Puebla region, especially its Talavera pottery and ceramic tiles. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Did you learn something new? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.